Well, today on the Awesome Marriage Podcast, we're going to answer your questions related to our health, healthy self, healthy marriage series that we've been doing. We have talked about physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health, and they all kind of overlap. So today, these questions are all over the map. We've got some tough ones, and we're going to do our best to give really clear and helpful answers today. But before we get into answering the questions, I want to make a note that this advice is not meant to be a substitute for your own counselor or your doctor. They will be able to know your situation a lot better and give you answers in more detail. So if you hear something, um, just make sure that you're checking that against the doctor who knows you personally. But these are general guidelines based on biblical principles that can be helpful. And if the Awesome Marriage Podcast has helped your marriage, Would you take a minute to leave us a rating and review if you haven't done so already? It's such a quick and easy thing, but it really does help others to find the show. And we really appreciate when you do. So Dr. Kim, got our first question. Are you ready? All right, here we go. I'm ready. Our first question says this. We've been married for 43 years and blessed with four adult children and five grandchildren. My husband has an alcohol problem. He drinks too much every day after work and becomes totally silent. He becomes a different person, and I struggle to get our marriage going. We follow your prayer plan on YouVersion, but he has no intention to change. I have also become silent, experiencing a lot of rejection and feeling depressed. I've stopped asking him to drink less because he does not think it's a problem. I'm heartbroken, and I don't know how to fight this addiction anymore. Well, Mm -hmm. first, my heart goes out to her. And I know there's a lot of people in that situation on both sides, male and female. And it's such a tough situation. A few things that I would think of out of that, Lindsay, is that for her, she's got to take care of herself. Sometimes we get so trying to fix somebody else or try to figure it out that we kind of let herself go, both spiritually and physically and health wise, all those kind of things. So take care of yourself, whatever that means. If I, I see this exercising, making mm-hmm. sure you're getting enough sleep, making sure you're you're eating right, do those kind of things. I think then an al group mm-hmm. would be excellent for you and help you understand this um, thing that he's dealing with, this addiction. And I think it would help you to be around some other people that are dealing with the same thing or have dealt with it. Uh, and I think just the support in mm-hmm. that and knowing you're not alone is huge. Um, and so I think the more you can understand this addiction, the more you can understand how to take care of yourself, that that's really good. Um, I think praying for him, um, God mm. wants him to get better more than you do and continue to lift him up in prayer. And then I would say, I think it'd be a really good idea for you to find a good Christian counselor that you could go to just for yourself. Um, and hopefully at some point along the way, your husband will will join you in that. But I think one of the things with alcoholics in, in AA starts there, you, you've got to admit you have a problem. Well, he's not at that step yet. And so until he is willing to do that, things are not going to change, no matter what you say or do. That's a decision he's got to make. So I think you love him. You, you Certainly, if you ever feel in danger or it gets abusive verbally or physically, then I think you've got to take care of yourself and get out of the situation. Um Otherwise, I think just do those things. Take care of yourself. Get in a group. Find you a good Christian counselor and, and really know that it's okay. There's You're limited in what you can do. Um, and that's hard for us sometimes because when we love someone and care mm. for them, you've been married for 43 years. You've had four kids and five grandkids together. I mean, that's a lot. Um, so know that you're not alone and that um, there are some answers for you and for him mm, when he's ready. To yeah, take that that's step. so good. That's so good. So there are steps that she can be taking right now, even when he's not seeing the problem at all. Yes. And that's, I think, uh, you know, I don't deal with drug and alcohol for, well, I'm not, I don't mm-hmm. feel like I'm good at that. And I think the people that do, the people that are usually in AA and mm-hmm. people like that, they're people that have been there, people in treatment centers, usually are people that have experienced that. So they are the ones, uh, yeah. but he's got to take yeah. that first step. Yeah, well, that's really good advice. And, um, and I think hopeful too, hopeful that there are some steps to take. One other thing that we might, that I might mention, sometimes an intervention will work. Um, if you want to consider that, and I think that would probably involve mm-hmm. you and your children, uh, probably their spouses, uh, if they're married. And I, and, but I think you want to find someone that does interventions in your area that's mm-hmm. from a Christian perspective. Talk to that person first because there's, mm. there's right ways and wrong ways to do intervention. And the bottom line you want is for him to be able to go to treatment or to get better. 
Um, so you want to talk to somebody that can ask you the right questions. Is this the right time? Is this something that might work? Or is this something that would make things worse right now? And so that's but that good. certainly is another option. That's good. And I think just to leave, before we leave this one, I think taking a note from that question where she mentions feeling depressed and rejected, um, I think that that would be something mm. good to work with. Like you mentioned, Dr. Kim, with your own counselor, um, because you don't have to wait for him to be ready for you to start growing out of that stuff. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's, that's good. So our next question is uh, also about physical health. So this one says, my wife has some health issues. So I do all the things you recommend except for discuss sex because talking about sex always seems to cause more pain and there's no way to resolve. So we get a lot of questions about how to bring up sex and what to do when there's physical problems that prohibit sex or make sex more difficult. So what do you say to this topic? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you've got to decide it isn't mm. going to resolve itself on its own. And you probably are aware of that. Um, so maybe a new approach. I mean, I think you have to look, I would, if I was counseling someone, I'd kind of look at what their sexual history was. Has it been, was it really good for a long period of time? Then all of a sudden things changed. Uh, has it mm. always been not great? And, um, and, and that is there things that, um, that have been a problem in the past. And so I think you want to, um, look at that and then maybe sit down with your spouse and say, Hey, this is something that's important to me. I think it could be important to us. I think that is God's design. That's not to make you feel guilty, but can we figure out a way to begin to work on that? And I would pray before you have that conversation mm-hmm. with your spouse and ask God to just give you the right words and to give you his wisdom and then let her know, don't blindside her, not when she's in the middle of cooking dinner, don't sit right. down and say, hey, can, let's talk about sex. No, that's, no, let her know that there's something important you want to talk to her about and set a time where you can both talk. And then I think starting out, you do more listening than talking. You kind of throw it out, hear what she says, mm-hmm. hear where she's coming from in that. Uh, there may be some fears there. There may some, be some uh, anxieties. And and I think the other thing is with the health issues, um, are you, are you addressing all of those? Um, is, have you been, have you talked to, have y'all talked to the doctor? Are there some people that, um, that you need to have that conversation with that could probably give you some insight? Um, and so sometimes I think, you know, we, um, maybe we go for our regular checkups and do those things, but sometimes even with the physician, sometimes mm-hmm. it's hard to bring up sex. And I think more doctors are willing to bring that up themselves now than I think they were in the past, but it, but a doctors talk about that with people and there's nothing wrong with bringing that up to your doctor and your doctor will probably have some insight because they see a lot of people. And even though you are unique in your situation, there's others who deal with the similar issues. And so, so I would say that uh, trying mm-hmm. to understand what happened in the past, uh, set a time to talk, a new approach, ask God to give you uh, his wisdom, the right words, um, and then uh, make sure that everything health-wise is being done to help, mm-hmm. to yeah, help that's the good. situation. That's good. Um, so there, there's a, like a kind of a three, three different steps that you can take, and they're all, all going to probably get you a little bit of traction. Yeah. And I think that's what you want to get something. And I get it. If, if you're struggling sex, mm-hmm. I think it is hard to put it on the table. Uh, as a guy, sometimes we think our wives, uh, because of, uh, our society and culture and movies that, well, all he wants to do is have sex. He doesn't care about me, which is not true. It's something that as a Christian couple, we know that unites us in a really special way and God uses it. And there's definitely a spiritual component to the sexual mm-hmm. relationship with a Christian couple. So, I think when we don't pursue that, we don't do everything we Mm -hmm. can, we are missing out. Now, some people get to that point. I get that. And I think there's others way to, to have that closeness, but if there's any way to work through that and get the point where Mm -hmm. that becomes a part of your life and becomes your normal, I mean, that for you, that may be once a month, it may, whatever Mm -hmm. it works for the two of you. Um, and so there are a lot of good conversations. And I, I think it's important to note what you said. Um, it's not going to fix itself just based on the number of questions we get from people who just, it's really, nobody wants to bring it up with their spouse. A lot of people have, I think like you, you tell us a lot of people have thought about it and not talked about it, but you're right. It's not going to go away on its own. Yes. And I think, you know, again, Christian counseling might be a good thing to Mm -hmm. go to together. If if it really is hard to talk about that, uh, when you, you can find a Christian counselor. You can uh, ask before you go in. Do mm-hmm. you deal with sexual issues with couples? And if that counselor does, then I think that would be a good place to start too, because maybe your wife would be more mm. comfortable in that situation with just the yeah. two of you. Yeah, that's good. Down a little, together. little uh, buffer there. <laughs> 
All right. Yes, so our next absolutely. question. Um, okay. I'm just going to read it as they wrote it. For over 27 years, I've endured a toxic marriage relationship that has attempted to take my life five times. The last time was in January this year. He has a rage problem, which seems to have simmered down a bit. We're both ordained ministers of the gospel. Our pastor is a bit intimidated by him, so I can't really prevail in the marriage. I need all the counsel I can get. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Um, You know, and I think just that that part in there that they both are ministers. um, And that I think the point I would make that is Mm -hmm. ministers have problems too. We all have problems, you know, and, and I've seen pastors that did a great job on the pulpit, but their lives mm-hmm. outside of that were a train wreck. Um, and I think eventually it fix what they can do in the, in the pulpit. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of God's grace that allows them to continue to do that for a while. I would say this, if it has come to the point where you felt your life was in danger, you, you need to put yourself in a safe place. And it's okay to do that. It's okay to take for mm-hmm. care of yourself. It's okay to say, until you get help, we're not going to live mm-hmm. together. I'm going to take care of myself, and I can't go on with that. I think anybody that has a rage problem can b- do a little behavior modification and take care of it for a while. But if his heart has not changed, as he has mm-hmm. not dealt with what is behind that rage, it will not get better. It will come back. And I think it usually seems to escalate, in my feeling, it over a period of time. It, and you can see if that fits this mm-hmm. situation, your situation, you know, has it gotten worse? So I think it's, you've, mm. you've got to make sure you're safe. I think you pray him. Um, if he isn't, if your pastor's intimidated by mm-hmm. him, I think that speaks a lot. Uh, mm. I, maybe you need a new pastor, you know, or someone that's willing to stand up to him and say, and, you know, in a loving Christian way to get in mm-hmm. his face and say, this is not good. You cannot do this. And if he's raging mm-hmm. at you, is he raging at other people? You know, and, and what does that mean? And plus, he's representing the gospel. And so um, there's just a lot of dynamics that go into this one. Um, but if he won't get help, I think you definitely have grounds for separation. Um, and if, if you've been abusive situation, you know, maybe even that leads to divorce at some time. I mean, I hate divorce, but you can't be in a marriage where you're afraid the whole time. That is Mm -hmm. not a a godly Christian marriage at all. And, and I don't think God expects you to endure that at all. And I think maybe it's been harder because you both are, are pastors. And so you feel like can't, we can't let the outside Mm -hmm. people see this, uh, Mm -hmm. but get past that. You've, you've got to have a marriage that, that you want to both want to be in mm-hmm. and that's healthy for both of you. And if it's not, then you got to take some steps. To yeah. About I think that. this one, kind of what you just spoke to Dr. Kim, when you said that as ministers, mm-hmm. you don't want to let outside people know that speaks to me as a pastor's wife, being married to a pastor and thinking, there's a lot of things that you don't, you don't need everyone to know. Like, uh, when, when somebody in your church is causing drama, everybody needs to know that that's, that's messy. Just because you're having marriage right. issues doesn't mean everyone needs to know, but someone should know what's going on here. This is not okay. Uh, having a spouse that makes you feel in danger is absolutely not what God intends in marriage. He intends us to be self-sacrificing in our love. So I think it's important for this person to know, like you said, seeking um, separation or safety is entirely okay. And I think that's what God would want for this person. Absolutely. And I, and again, if your pastor and I'm not, I don't know your pastor, but if you don't feel like you can comfortably go with to your pastor and receive the kind of counsel that you need at this point, I think you want to find a Christian counselor or mm-hmm. another pastor that will listen to you that understands what you're going yes. through. And yes. can guide I think you. that's really good. Um, and I think I, it, it just kind of hurts my heart to hear that this person is a, is a minister, but is carrying on like this. That's just not healthy. It's not representative of God's love. Like you said, Dr. Kim. And so I think, I think if this, if some, this wife doesn't, yeah. I'm assuming wife, um, yeah, she's, um, doesn't yes. take some action to get herself to health. There might not be a wake up call for this husband. And that's kind of a scary thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's not going to take care mm-hmm. of itself. Okay. So we'll put also some links in the show notes to domestic violence, um, hotline. And to some of the work that we've talked recently with Dr. David Clark, who really specializes in this abuse and why there's a biblical case for not staying in an abusive marriage at all, because that's not God's heart for marriage. 
Yeah, we love Dr. Clark. Mm -hmm. He has become a very good friend, and he's he's he very <laughs> blunt about it. But he's that, that's all he deals with, and so uh, you can take some of that maybe with a grain of salt. But what he says, his truths, and his and the solutions he has are are I think biblical, and I think they make a difference for people. And honestly, if your husband continues on mm -hmm. that track, he's going to crash at some point. Mm -hmm. It he just will. I I don't think I've ever seen a pastor that is hiding things. Mm. Uh, that eventually mm -hmm. didn't crash. Oh yeah. Unfortunately it's so true. I've seen it too. And the longer it goes, the harder it gets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So be encouraged. There Absolutely. are things you can do and we are praying for you and, and really believe that this can get better, Absolutely. but it probably will take some active steps. It will not be easy. Okay. So our next yeah. question comes from someone who says, my spouse has trauma in their past. It's affecting their mar our marriage, but they will not get help. What do I do? I, I think sometimes when we have trauma in the past, we're afraid to face it. We're afraid that maybe more things will come out than, um, hmm. than we remember, or maybe that, uh, yeah, I, we just can't handle it. Hmm. I can't go back to that because it was so painful. Um, but I think you have to start with the with this the, the truth that that God mm -hmm. has a way out of that for you. God has healing for that. God does not want trauma victims to continue to be victims mm -hmm. the rest of their life. He wants people that have um, gone through trauma to be able to have victory over that. And and even where God totally redeems that people I've seen with that have overcome it is then your story becomes mm -hmm. something that helps other people. And so uh, I think I think that's a a big a big step for them. So I would start by just praying for, for your spouse. Um, if they're afraid of counseling and, and maybe you say, well, I would love to go to counseling with you. I will support you through this. Um, and really mm -hmm. talk from your heart to them about how it is affecting you. Cause you know, when you get in that situation with that trauma and the fear, you get pretty self-absorbed in that. It just can, mm -hmm. can, it can just take over. And, and fear is just uh, it's so crippling. And I think it's something the enemy uses against us. I mean, the enemy does not mm -hmm. want your spouse to be healed. He, your enemy would much rather your spouse stay like that and your marriage mm -hmm. isn't everything God wants it to be. Well, that's not what God wants. And so I, I think whatever you can do to encourage your spouse to come alongside them, uh, to go to counseling with them, praying with them, uh, those kind of yeah. things would be helpful. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, and so it's, it's worth facing that fear for sure. Yeah. To get it, get into that. Mm -hmm. It is. And I, and I get it. It's hard, but you know, I've never had anybody that was willing mm -hmm. to do that, that mm -hmm. regretted it. Uh, even though it can be hard and sometimes it's painful going back through things, but when you get on the other side mm -hmm. of it, there's so much freedom there. There's so mm -hmm. much freedom that God gives you. I think really, truly, when I think about all the questions we've already answered in this episode, what you just said about the Lord does not want people to stay victims of their past or of their circumstances, but he can bring victory. I think that's kind of a word for all these that th these are some really tough things, yes. but I think once you face it, you know, kind of get into the process of tackling whatever you got to do, there's something waiting on the other side. It's not just like, Oh, you got to face it and keep facing it. There's actually hope in a future. Like he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, like you can get through this and get onto something better. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I've seen it happen almost in some way or other, almost every question we have today, mm -hmm. I've seen a couple overcome that. So I know mm -hmm. what God can do. That's so encouraging. Okay. So we kind of get into some lighter stuff here. <laughs> Whew, deep breath. Um, so <laughs> the heavy so this next yeah. question is more focused on the mental health. And so this person asks in regard to okay. having a, a new mindset, right? And a different framing your spouse, uh, mm. with positive rather than negative. They say, when you do change your mind yeah. and what you focus on, how do you know that you're not letting serious things slide? And what do you do about the things that really bothered mm. you? Well, first I would, I would, if you, I would sit down and, and what are those things? And maybe you want to make a list of those things. And then I think you want to pray, mm -hmm. um, about him. I want to take him before God, ask for his wisdom. Um, there are some things I think that God just, we just believe him in his hands mm -hmm. and, and he just heals it. He just takes care of it. Uh, but then there's other things that God says, I'm, I'm going to walk through this with you. I'm going to be with you there. Uh, so as far as letting things slide, I think you have to kind of evaluate. I think choosing your battles well is always a good thing. You know, what is this? Why am I, um, 
is this really important for me to deal with, for us to deal with? Uh, what happens if we don't deal with it? Is it really that big a deal in the big picture? You know, if, if it, your spouse comes home and they forgot to pick up milk and nobody has milk the next morning for breakfast, well, I think that's something you can let slide. It's not a battle you want to fight. We're all human. We all make mistakes. If he forgets it every single time, then you got to sit down and talk about it. But, but I think sometimes just choosing your battles and sometimes I think it goes along with how we frame our spouse and, and not giving grace in times where you need to, uh, get grace. So you want to look at the big picture. How do you, uh, frame your spouse? And is there anything that needs to change in there? You want to get to where you see yourself, your spouse as a gift from God. And, and not perfect, but someone that really cares for you, loves you, is trying. They're human, but but mm, they're God's mm-hmm. gift to you. Yeah, yeah. And I think one one thing that I don't think you have to worry about because uh, when you do change your focus and reframe your spouse as a gift from God and someone who you're not against, but you're on the same team, I think that's gonna. I think it will automatically resolve a few issues. Absolutely. I th- that's a really good point you brought up. You know, one of the things that most couples that come in for counseling struggle with communication. And it's amazing as they learn to communicate, which to me, 90% of communicating is listening well. So you really hear what your spouse is saying. But if you learn to communicate well, I think that solves maybe 90% mm-hmm. of your problems. Because a lot of it comes because of assumptions or how we framed each other or that we didn't listen well to our spouse. And we really take that time to learn how to listen to each other, to talk in a, in a loving way mm-hmm. to each other, to be kind to each other, to work every con- conversation mm-hmm. like that is for your marriage, not a win-lose thing. But how does our marriage win? Because every time Absolutely. your marriage wins, you both yeah. win. Yeah, so you're not going to lose. Always. Yeah. You know, just by viewing them as your, as your friend and as your gift, that's not a loss. That's going to work towards creating some no. healthy gains. Cool. No, absolutely. All right. So the next question, yes. oh man, I relate to this. I bet a lot of people do. I like the idea of working on self-awareness, but it seems like a lot of work. I don't have the time or energy. <laughs> well, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get, yeah, yeah. I get the energy. I think we all have time. Um, uh, yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, we don't have time. And so I did. I kind of asked some questions. I said, how, tell me again about how many, how much uh, episodes you binge <laughs> on Netflix every week. And they go, well, and I said, and you were talking about some of the things you saw as you're scrolling through your social media. How, how long do you do that? And I think we, uh, and that's not to put anybody down. All those things are fine, but if they're keeping you from uh, making yourself better or becoming more of who God wants mm-hmm. you to be. You want to have balance there. I'm not mm-hmm. saying you have to quit doing any of those things, but you want to make sure there's balance. So I think you, you want to, you want to pray. Uh, you want to um, read the Bible. See what is God saying to you there? I think Psalms are a great way to read mm-hmm. through because David is so honest in his, in his, in the Psalms about his struggles, his anger at God sometimes and his love for God. And so, All of those, I think, help. I think it helps as you're going to work on that is to have an accountability partner. I think someone that you will meet with probably once a week, maybe for coffee or something. Um, But just some way that can, because it is hard and it takes time and energy. And we need somebody that's going to encourage us. And I think sometimes your spouse can do some of that. Sometimes I think an accountability partner, same sex as you are, can can really help in that too. They're going to be a little more objective. they're not going to, you know, and I think maybe at times even a little more mm-hmm. honest with them, with you. But as you grow, I think one thing that I've seen, it does energize you because it gives you hope. And I think so all those things that you are aware of or want to be aware of that are probably bogging you down as you get through those things, it will give you hope. And, and, and the prayer is really, God, who did you design me to be? And what's standing in the way of me being that person? And I think it's another place to make a list. Just prayerfully go through that and what's on that list. And then begin with prayer uh, and whoever else you need to bring into Mm, that. Start working through that. Um, And this could be, yeah, and I think a a Christian counselors are awesome at helping someone go through that because they're, they've seen other people go through the same things. Uh, they have an in, some insight and wisdom there that God can really use yeah. them in that situation. But um, I would just encourage this person or anyone who's kind of been thinking about to don't make excuses, just take that first step. And, mm-hmm. and persevere and That's see what good. I just does. love that you cast out that kind of vision of like 
working from who God made you to be rather than working to avoid, you know, I, f- I feel like just personally, I shared about this in the mental health episode, I think, but the process of kind of staying busy, a, a lot of times we just do it as a reflex because it's easier than dealing with the underlying yeah. feelings or yeah. becoming self-aware. And when we start to, to deal with some stuff, we can learn how to say the appropriate no's, set the appropriate margin, kind of free ourselves up. But we also don't have to stay distracted. We don't have to fear this kind of subliminal fear of like, oh no, what's going to happen if I have to sit alone with myself for five minutes? Right, right. And, and you know, sometimes that is, I remember a pastor one time, uh, he challenged us all that week to, to be totally silent for five minutes every day. So I've got this. Boy, the first day I yeah. was looking at my watch all the time, five mm-hmm. minutes seemed like an eternity. And so after that, yeah. I set a timer. So at least I could, but just being silent and listening to God. And so I, I think that is hard, but I think it's a, uh, as we work on that, I think not that God's going to verbally speak to you, but he's going to, he's going to work within that when you're seeking him and you give yourself time to just kind of listen to where he's directing, what he's saying really help you so i would yeah. just say don't don't be afraid of it just just take that step and i don't think no, you'll ever regret no, that you do no. yeah the, i mean the energy you're spending to not be self-aware might be more than what you realize so letting it go no. absolutely absolutely and i think you did bring up again uh the god designed you to be i think a lot of times we try to be who culture wants us to be or even some i talked to a, a couple last week and she said i spent seven years trying to put him into right. a mold that i thought he should be and of course then he thinks i've got to do this well she said as soon as i was able to let go of that and let him become who god wants him to be and seeing him seek god and grow in that he said god did yeah, a lot better amazing. job than I was doing. <laughs> it's amazing he's good at stuff you know yeah <laughs> It, oh man, yes. that's good. That's good. Um, okay. So our final question, this is, we're in, we're in really practical here. I love this question. Uh, Dr. Kim, you mentioned using some breathing exercises to help with stress. You mentioned that a couple of times. How do you do those? Okay. Uh, I think God wired us in certain ways that, that our body, that we can really help ourselves and take care of ourselves, uh, just the way we are wired. Another thing besides breathing is, um, a hug from somebody that cares about you. It is amazing how, how that can energize me when Nancy gives me a hug, if she knows that I've had a rough day or something like that, because I think God put these touch points in our body. And when someone we love Mm -hmm. is engaging with that, Mm -hmm. it does bring healing. As far as the breathing, what, what I do, and there's different ways to do this. Uh, there's some great apps that, uh, maybe have, uh, some music in the background or uh, someone reading some scripture to do this. But I think I do it a lot of times just during my day. If I just feel like, man, I'm kind of stressed or things going on. Um, I try to get comfortable. You can lie down, you can sit. Um, and I try to do slow, deep breaths. And I usually breathe in on about a four count. And then I breathe out on a four count. And then I focus on the breathing. And what I focus on is mm. breathing the Holy spirit in and breathing the stress out and do that five or 10 times. And I think the pattern of doing it, actually, I, um, I'm using an, an app now. And one of the things it does is encourage you to breathe, take consciously mm-hmm. breathe like that every day, because I think it makes a difference. I think it helps reduce stress. I think it helps us, uh, maybe mm-hmm. calm down if we're upset. And, and so it's, it's something you can do almost anywhere. I think obviously if you're quiet and you're not distracted and you can, be away from others when you're doing that. I think it can be more effective because you don't have the distract- distractions, but I do it in the work day. Uh, just breathe in slowly, let it out uh, slowly. And, and I loved, I can't remember who first told me that just that you're breathing in the Holy spirit. You know, the Holy spirit mm-hmm. wants what's best for you. You know, that the Holy spirit brings healing into you mm-hmm. and then breathing out the stress and just kind of just consciously doing that. I think it makes a difference. And I think it, it goes back to where right. it's no, some weird mystical thing. It's yeah. like God wired us uh, where we yeah. can do things yeah. that really it's help like us. It's like the simplest prayer you could pray, just inviting the presence mm-hmm. of God where you are. That's good. Yeah. What What is the name of the Absolutely. app that you're using Absolutely. for that? Do you want to share that? Well, I think the pause app by John Eldridge is really good. Um, 
I think it's John's voice mm-hmm. in it. His voice is so soothing anyway when he's talking. And you can do it. I think they're broken up in the five minute different different links and different ones to do. And then I also, because I'm just a technology geek and I like to exercise, yeah. I got a whoop band uh, a few months ago. And that, that what that does, it just tracks your breathing, your exercise, your sleep, all those kind of things. And on it, there are some breathing exercises on that. And so mm-hmm. there's there's some apps to help you. Uh, I love Eldridge's. I, I think you ha- you have. I think you have to be in a quiet mm-hmm. place to do that because to really get the most of that. So it might be after the kids are gone in the morning, your spouse is gone, or maybe in the, late in the evening, or sometime when you just have, or maybe it's at work and you just close the door. Yeah. For five or ten minutes, I've got a good friend that has done that for years. That he always brings his lunch. He has his lunch. He closes mm-hmm. his doors and he has a quiet time. And so. You know, there's yeah. there's options and ways to do that, but but I think looking for that and realizing the value in that, uh, I think you know I don't know that when Jesus would go away to pray that he did deep breathing, but I know he went to seek the Father, and I know in that there was mm-hmm. there was uh, strength and uh, wisdom and all the mm-hmm. things that came from, yeah, from his absolutely. time with his Father, and so I think uh, that same uh, yeah opportunities there. Yeah, us. that's good. Yeah. Sometimes the simple things just really can reorient us the the most easily. Yes. Uh, well, Dr. Ken, this has been Absolutely. a really helpful conversation today, just covering a lot of ground, answering a lot of questions. Um, are, are there any final piece of advice you'd have as we close out this conversation? Well, first, thanks to our listeners for asking questions. Uh, I love that. I love this kind of thing. One of the things I love most about when I when I speak is the questions a- afterwards, because those are mm-hmm. things that people are really dealing with. I mean, I can say things in general that I think people will help people, but the specific questions I love, and, and I know there's other topics that we'll be mm-hmm. able to do this on in the future. But I guess out of this is what, whatever situation you find yourself in, whatever's triggered by that series that we just did, on healthy self, self, healthy marriage, that, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's hope there that if you feel like you're stuck or you're going backwards, your know, marriage, I think always moves. It goes forward or backward. I don't think it stands still. And so, um, if there's things that need to be done to help you, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, just take that first step and know that, mm-hmm. um, that God's are with you in it. And that I've never seen a situation mm-hmm. that God didn't have an answer for. Wow. Ever. Yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Cause there's hope for, there's hope for everyone. And, and I like, uh, just the idea that as long as we're here, you said this earlier in this series, but as long as we're alive, he's got a plan for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love it when, uh, you know, I said, I was thinking, uh, well, my mom who lived to be almost 90 and, uh, she, the, the years after my dad died, which is about eight or nine years that she was without him, uh, you know, I, I see what I've seen other people doing that. She had women into her home. Mm-hmm. She had Bible studies. You would walk into her home and there's a table that she studied at and they would always have Bible concord, mm-hmm. different things, the Bible to study with that. And she was just a living witness. And I think as much as she was ready to go to heaven and, and reunite with mm-hmm my dad in Christ and all those kind of things. She knew mm. that God still was using her and she ministered to so many people, uh, by herself wow. during those nine years. And, and so I think that just helped me see that God always is going to use this. There, there's a story I heard years ago about a young woman and she was paralyzed for life. And she had had all these hopes and dreams of what she wanted to do. And somebody wrote her and asked her, hmm. would you pray for me? And it started a whole ministry for the rest of is what I knew of her life that she wow. prayed for people around the world, the people. And she was a prayer warrior. Apparently her wow. prayers were really answered by the Lord. And so she, the woman that couldn't do anything, but pray, mm-hmm. but how much power there was in that and, and the people that she touched around the world. So I think wherever we are, God has, yeah. a, has something for us to do no matter what stage of life we're in. And mm-hmm. sometimes we're on the stretcher. I get that. But when we're off the stretcher, he's got something to do. And when Absolutely. we're on the stretcher, he's got healing yes. for us. Yeah. Oh, that's so you know. good. So I, I really hope that um, that this conversation has been encouraging and helpful. I hope that uh, I hope that everyone who sent these questions has listened and heard the answers and uh, is encouraged. And of course, we always welcome I, that you reach out to us at info at awesome if you have questions about 
anything we mentioned today, don't hesitate to reach out. We love hearing from you and we do answer every email we get. We have an awesome care team that, that takes good care of people and we work together to do that. Um, okay. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook and find Dr. Kim on TikTok. And if you have a minute to leave this a rating review, that is such a helpful way to help the show. So all the links we mentioned today will be in the show notes. Um, And just know as you're listening, we're praying over each of these marriages and and we really do pray for all the the people we interact with and contact. And we just want to see God's healing brought into marriages. And we believe that that is happening. And we, we believe in that. Thanks so much for listening and sharing your time with us today. Have a great day and do something awesome for your marriage today.